so moving over to the defensive side of the ball, uh, and like the offense, there, were, there is a new leader for that group in defensive coordinator J.J. Clark, uh, who followed Coach Walden over from Austin P, where he was most recently served as their, their defensive coordinator and safeties coach. What can you tell us about the type of defensive scheme that Coach Clark plans to run at UTEP? Yeah, I'm not sure on the scheme yet, but I know him and Coach uh, Kevin Sigler from Jacksonville State. I mean, they're going to have – they have talent. They have a lot of talent. It's going to be young talent, a lot of young linebackers that they're bringing in that that are really versatile, right? They can they can play up in the box. They can, you know, drop back in coverage, a lot of different things. So I'd expect those to be, you know, big-time production tackling machines, I like to call them. And, you know, on the outside in the secondary, um, they've been offering a lot of grad transfers in the spring window, uh, cornerback-wise, because, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of UTEP's corners that they have on the roster now are young and inexperienced and they need a big time, you know, a secondary leader to AJ Odoms, who was really good last year in New Mexico transfer. So, um, you know, I'm not sure what kind of scheme they'll be using, but uh, I'm really excited. I think that'll be the, the big selling point to, to fans this year is that defense. So talking about the defense and more specifically the defensive line, uh, you guys lose Keenan Stewart, Praise, Amawahule, Kanias Vaughn, uh, Jalen Rudolph, but you do return Maurice Westmoreland, Katie Johnson, Tavita Tafuna, Logo Logovaya, and others. And you also bring in Quinvavius Warren coming over from Jacksonville State, as as well as uh, Devin Gurry from uh, Missouri State. Kind of how did that that group look this spring, and did anybody stand out on that defensive line? Yeah, I mean, honestly, Maurice Westmoreland, I, I didn't think he'd be coming back. He's he's just so good. He's so good. He reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, Kanai Vaughn, who transferred to Utah. He doesn't get a lot of pass rushing snaps, but when he does, he's making the most of them. And he played a, a really certain role that Dana Demo liked. It was kind of like a drop end role. He dropped into coverage from, yeah. from that edge, but he's really, you know, a four point stance guy. So, you know, um, he was obviously the biggest guy to stand out. And um, Katie Johnson, I mean, Katie Johnson's really good. I don't understand why he didn't play more last year. I know they were kind of, jammed up in the middle with a lot of playing time but i mean he's really good he's really good so i think all those returners on the defensive line are going to have big time roles this year and you know i'm excited the linebacking group loses the leader of its defense and leading tackler tyrese knight who's off to the nfl but <clears throat> but they also lose their second leading tackler and james neal to texas state they do bring in Trey Dunson from Gardner Webb, Dylan Brown, Turner from Florida State, and Dorian Hopkins from Tulsa, as well as returners Kenny Bird, Jay Call, and others. How did that linebacking group look in the spring? Yeah, Trey Dunson really stood out to me. I mean, a lot of these FCS guys have chips on their shoulder and they play like it. They play like, hey, this is gonna be my last down ever. And they're they're going out there, they're giving in his all and Trey Dunson was one of those guys, even off the field. He's he's leading the team. He's doing stuff like that. So he stood out to me, and they looked great. They looked great, honestly. Um, I didn't see a lot of Dylan Brown Turner. Dorian Hopkins is obviously, you know, that's kind of their big-time get. He's a grad transfer from Tulsa. Had a lot of production there. And, um, you know, they look, they look solid. They look solid. I think that'll be, you know, the best part of that defense, honestly. So – would you expect then that two linebacker roles filling in for the defense in 2024 would be Hopkins and Dunson? Yeah, I do expect that. But I think Brown Turner, you know, just him being from Florida State, fans are going to be talking. Fans are going to be talking a lot. So he'll see the field. We'll see how he pans out. I think he's really talented, but he's also very young. So, you know, Dunson and, and um, Hopkins have that over him at this point, at least. The defensive backfield uh, takes some losses as well, losing uh, Kobe Hilton, Tory Richardson, Tyler Williams, uh, Trehan Hugh. Uh, they bring in Xavier Smith and Corey Chapman coming over from Austin P. Uh, Dylan Williams from North Texas, uh, Yesman Green coming from Jacksonville State, Jalen Shelton from Texas State, and they also return AJ Odoms, Oscar Moore, and Amir Boyd Math, Trez Moore, as well as others. You know, you talked a little bit about this. How how do you see that defensive backfield kind of shaping up? Yeah, I mean, I think um, at this point, I think A.J. Odoms solidified cornerback one. I don't think there's any argument about that. At the safety position, you know, it, it's tough. I think Oscar Moore looked really good out there. Um, you know, 
Yes, man, Green showed some potential. Same with Dylan Williams, but I think the biggest standout is Xavier Smith. I mean, he was one of the best FCS freshmen last year, an FCS freshman All-American. Obviously, he's been in the news. You know, a Colorado guy at first, he was, you know, they talked about it on The Athletic, how he got forced out this and the third. So he'll be playing with the chip on his shoulder as well. And I think he's really, really exciting. He'll probably be, you know, if I had to say, you know, a breakout, it'd be Xavier Smith. But um, they obviously have that that spur role that they call it, and I have no idea who's going to be playing that. Yeah, and, I was going to ask you about that. I think Corey Chapman kind of played that role for them at Austin P. So I just I thought maybe he might have a uh, an inside edge there to kind of play that because it's more of like a, it's like a high, hybrid linebacker safety kind of role. Yeah, it is linebacker safety and. You know, they'll even line them up in the nickel, right? If, if they're running, yeah. you know, something like yep. that, they'll line them up in the nickel. So they need a lot of versatility there. Um, you know, I wouldn't say anybody from the linebacking crew would have a shot at that position, but, you know, you never know. I think Corey Chapman does have that inside lead, and I'd expect him to be playing that position come uh, day one. Uh, you kind of talked about the defensive breakout player here in 2024 and being Xavier Smith on the defensive side of the ball. 